All right, now I'm going to talk about some books that are both for the King James Bible and those that are against the King James Bible. Um, and I have a lot more books that are in my collection that I haven't read. These are the ones I've read. These are the ones I've reviewed. So there are some others that are back in here uh, that I still have yet to read. Um, some I'm trying to work my way through, but I'm just going to go through what I've read and studied. Okay. Um, again, going back to the whole thing, if you've been hearing, watching these, this little series of videos, uh, I heard about the Bible version issue first through Kent Hovind, which led me to a number of websites and, um, uh, started bringing up some of the stuff to, uh, members of the family, my family and my oldest brother, um, and my older brother. Both are new versionists. They've always been new versionists, and they will probably always be new versionists. And um, <clears throat> they both got mad about Ken Hoven, and all this is all just lies. It's nonsense. It's conspiracy, conspiracy theory stuff, whatever. And they went out, rushed, rushed out looking for any bio, or any book that could answer this thing of the King James only thing and the new versions take out verses and the whole deal. And they both promoted this book right here, the King James only controversy by James White. Okay, so um, I had read this book, the answer book, first, and I went out and I found you know a copy of this. I went to Chick Publications because Ken Hovind would say about you know you can check out if you want more information, check out this website. Well, I checked it out. I bought a copy of this. I read through this, and about the same time, my oldest brother gave me a copy of this, his copy. He let me borrow it. He didn't give it to me. He just said, here, read this. And so I was reading this and I could see, okay, this guy's a liar. This guy's, there's some real serious problems with this James White guy. And I thought he's taking people out of context and there's some real issues. Didn't understand at the time that Norman Geisler up here is a trained Jesuit. And there's another guy or two on the back of this. Um, I can't remember what the other guy was here, but um, a whole bunch of different liars and things promoting this book. And James White uh, has some issues as well. Uh, some of his other ones of his books are actually promoted by um, Jesuits as well. There, here's another one down here, The Forgotten Trinity. Right there with the occult tricatra on it. The Bible forbids making symbols of the Godhead. But uh, right there you have Father Mitchell Pacwa S.J. And again, Norman Geisler. So you have a trained Jesuit here. And an actual Jesuit priest right over here promoting it. Okay, so let me just, I'll get in closer here so you can actually see this. So here you have a trained Jesuit right there, Norman Geisler, and over here you actually have a Jesuit priest promoting James White's book. Hmm, thought that was kind of an interesting thing. And I brought out a video years ago, why is James White's book endorsed by a Jesuit? And James White came out and he did a video, you know, making fun of me and whatever else. And a couple of the uh, <clears throat> brethren left because of that. And I thought, well, then your faith really isn't in the King James Bible. It's in my defense of it. And if somebody comes out and makes fun of me and whatever, and, and he never did actually my, answer my point, by the way. It was kind of funny. But um, so I had a couple guys that came out and they, oh, I can't stand for the King James Bible anymore because James White made a fool out of Brian Denlinger or something. Uh, no, he didn't actually, but uh, he uses mockery and things like that. They mock. Um, that's what lost people do. Didn't answer my questions. But again, that's why I don't do debates, just to be very plain, because if I do debates and I crush people, then you believe in me and my ability to destroy other people. That's wrong. It's a pride competition. But long story short, um, I read this book almost, you know, right after I read this one and before I got into a lot of this other stuff. So to say, well, you just were, you know, born and raised in this King James only cult. No, I wasn't. I was born and raised in a non-denominational independent Bible church. Calvary Monument Bible Church is where I was raised. They did not use the King James Bible. They used the new versions and they said things about the new versions are more accurate than the King James Bible that was preached from the pulpit. Um, the whole time I was growing up. So, no, I was not raised in a King James only cult. Okay. And um, like this book tries to present people as being. But I have James White's first edition and I have the next edition here. 
that he came out with. So I have both of these. And I would recommend, if you're going to read that book, James White's book, I think you should get this one here, which completely destroys James White. Let me just do it this way, and, and I think it's funny. Um, but you have Peter Ruckman's book, The Scholarship Only Controversy, and James White's book, The King James Only Controversy. So this one was made to look like this one for a reason. But uh, he answers all of James White's silly little attacks. And again, you know, why don't you come out with an actual video, you know, answering things point by point? Because so many other uh, brothers out there have come out with videos and, or books and things answering this. So there's really no point in doing that. But I have read it, okay? He didn't prove his point. Here's another one, the King James Version Debate, A Plea for Realism by D.A. Carson. Again, they, they always, you know, um, this is the best book in print on a topic too often riddled with emotion and ignorance. You're emotional and ignorant if you believe in the King James Bible. All right. A plea for realism. Oh, just let's come back down to earth if you're a King James only guy. You see the attitude from these new version people? But here you have the NIV story by Burton L. Goddard, where they admit to going to a Catholic uh, convent run by nuns to do part of the translation for the NIV. And you can go through, and I, I have this in my, you can see all the different highlights that I have in it. Um, and I have quotes from this book in my Real Bible Version issue exposed. So yes, I did read it. The NIV, The Making of a Contemporary Translation. Again, I have lots of uh, highlightings and, and things in this. This is in my documentary as well, some of the quotations from it. Um, I've read their work. All right. I don't have an exhaustive supply of everything that's anti-King James, but I have a bunch of them. And there's another thing I have here from John Ankerberg. I don't remember where that, that one's at. Um, I've got uh, all of John MacArthur's commentaries. They were sent to me by one of my viewers of the ministry i have uh can't reach it right now because i'm plugged in here um, but there's a the evidence bible over there by ray comfort new king james version um he's another heretic uses the new versions i wouldn't waste time on that guy but the point is i have the enemy's writings okay i've read their attacks on the king james bible i'm very well aware of their attacks so if you're out there and you're saying well i stand for the new versions and denlinger's obviously ignorant of them um, if he knew the truth about the textual, you know, differences and what it, I know all the attacks on the King James Bible. All right. I'm very well aware of all of them. So don't waste my time. Okay. And if you're here on this channel thinking I'm going to change, then you're wasting your time. I won't be changing anytime soon. This book is everything to me. Okay. And I've proved it years of research, 24 years of research is what I've done to prove the King James Bible, and I've lived it and the whole thing. <clears throat> so, answer book by, by Sam Gipp. I think he's got three of these out now or something like that, answering all the different questions on the Bible version issue, and he does a good job. Short and to the point, question number 35, you can see. There's the question, there's the answer. Boom. Um, I recommend his book. I don't have to agree with the guy perfectly, doctrinally, and whatever else, but it's a good book, and I will give credit where credit is due. I don't agree with Ruckman on everything. I don't agree with Gip on everything. I don't agree with David Daniels or Chick Publications on everything. But they write really good books on the Bible version issue, and I recommend buying those, having them in your library. The Burial Berries, 64 Questions by Herb Evans. Okay. And you can see his depiction of a modern uh, um, <clears throat> preacher <laughs> on the back there, standing there in his lacy underwear, standing on top of the Greek. On the Greek, he stands, you know, and then he's got a little teddy bear up at the pulpit there. If you can see that, I think it's kind of funny. But little booklet there, King James Onlyism in Action by Peter Ruckman. Little booklet. <clears throat> Let's Weigh the Evidence by Barry Burton. Another good, just presents the arguments very well. The Bible Believer's Guide to Elephant Hunting, The Reign of Valera, 1960. Ruckman points out some of the issues with it and whatever else. Um, that's a whole other issue, the Spanish translation, which one's the perfect one and whatever, the, the Reign of Valera, the, the Gomez, the this, the that. Um, I don't get into all that stuff. Spanish is not my native tongue, so I don't really get into that. There's a whole other issue on 
uh, the Heilecker Schrift here. I have, this is an old Heilecker Schrift, Die Bibel, right there, Luther's translation. Um, this is, a, like I said, this is a pretty old one. I have that one. And then you have <clears throat> the, uh, uh Schlachter 2000, I've been told by a lot of the, my German brothers out there that this is a better one. It's a little bit closer to the King James Bible. I have done some reading in it. I'm still, German is my native tongue if you go back far enough, but it was taken from us here, especially during World War II when you were not allowed to speak German. You had to change your German name. Again, my original name would have been Denklinger with a K in it. Now it's Denlinger because it had to be made to sound less German and things. But um, I struggle to learn the German language because uh, I'm very busy and trying to, to study it and everything else. <sighs> I wish I had more time to study it, but <clears throat> um, New King James Version Nonsense here by Daryl Coates. Another one I read. A lot of these I bought with my money back in the years when I was not making huge amounts of money, but it, I would do tree jobs or, or whatever else, sell some wood turnings back years ago. And uh, I'd put all my money into studying the Bible version issue. Which Bible is God's Word by Gail Ripplinger with Noah Hutchings. Biblical Scholarship by Peter Ruckman. A lot of stuff in there. And again, you, know, you can see bookmarks up in the top there. You can, you know, there's highlightings and things in here. Just went past one. I didn't highlight all the pages. But you can see pages are highlighted. So it's not, oh, it's just for looks, you know. Uh, you get some wicked atheists or something. They say Denlinger just fills up all these bookshelves with a bunch of books that he's never actually read. Uh, well, some of them I don't read because they're for reference, okay. I don't have to read every single book that I have. Up here I had actually some... Muslim viewers of mine send me the, um, what is that, uh, the Bukhari or something like this, uh, the Noble Quran, and then there's the, another one here in Islamic University, and they send me these and things. Well, I'll, uh, if I ever get around to having nothing else to do, you know, I'll read them or something. There's a whole bunch of stuff by Islam up there, uh, History of the Jews here, um, you know, a bunch of things. I don't have time to read all that stuff right now, but I'll have it there for reference if people contact me and what do you think about this? Can you prove such and such or whatever? Well, right there's the proof in paper form. I don't have to go to try to Google it or something else. So a lot of this stuff, yes, I have not read it, um, you know, page all the whole way through, all the pages, in other words, um, it's for reference. But the books that I'm showing you, these I read, okay? Um, Alexandrian cult series, again, uh, highlighting in there, you can see, uh, read the whole way through, learned a lot in here, how the Alexandrian cult people talk and how they write. Manuscript evidence, Ruckman's probably the most controversial book that he has. People get all upset here because he said that you can correct the original Greek with the English. And people say, well, that's blasphemy. How could he dare say that? He's speaking sarcastically. Okay, there is no original Greek. They are worn out. They're gone. Uh, God didn't rapture them up to heaven. You know, people take the verse there in Psalms 119 where it talks about forever thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, I think thy word is settled in heaven. And they say, oh, see, it's settled in heaven. That means the original autographs, God, you know, after they made copies, God caught them up to heaven or something. And there's this glass case up there enshrined in gold or something. And, and you have all the original autographs, you know, in one magnificent volume with, you know, special LED lighting on them or something. <laughs> uh, no, no. And so what he was trying to say in this book is that there are places where the King James translation, um, you can look at it and you can say, that's obviously God's word. And there are no original manuscripts. There's no original Greek. There's no original Hebrew. So you can correct that with what we have today because you know it lines up with other scriptures. That's what he was saying. But people will lie about him. 
Just like they lie about me and just like they'll lie about you if you stand for the King James Bible. Uh, there's the NIV, an in-depth documentation of apostasy by Ruckman. There you go. 1 John 5, 7, the Johannine comma, talks about this. The historical evidence for it, quoted by some of the early church fathers. And uh, not meaning that we support the church fathers. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But it just means simply that if they quoted it, then it was there for them. See, they try to say that the Johannine comma was a later, it was a gloss. It was added later on to the scriptures, just like, you know, Mark 9, 44, Mark 9, 46, Acts 8, 37, verses like that, that the new versions take out. Well, that was just, they were added. Uh, no, because the church fathers quoted them many times. Alexandrian Cult, Part 2, by Ruckman, a little booklet. The Christian Liar's Library. Again, just to show, I'll just flip a page open there. There's my markings in it. I read the books, I studied it in detail. The Unknown Bible, another one that I read from Ruckman, King James Onlyism versus Scholarship Onlyism. How to Teach the Bible, Look What's Missing by David Daniels. Uh, the King James Only Controversy, Can You Trust the Modern Translations? A Critique of James R. White's book by Dr. Thomas Holland. Read it? Studied it. Did the Catholic Church give us the Bible? Right there. You can see here on the back of this one, the little printed label down at the bottom there for our old house church. Uh, questions or comments, please write to King James Video Ministries and the address in Hopeland, Pennsylvania. We used to give these out. We'd go door to door and people would have questions about the new versions. We'd give them one of these. Would you like a copy of this book? Yes, I'd like to read that. So, I've read that. I've studied that. I actually preached a whole class on that book at another Baptist church I used to go to. New Age Bible versions. This is my old one here. You can see the edges are all kind of crinkled. I don't know if you can see that. But again, you know, bookmarked pages, highlighted text. I've studied it. I've read it. I have the newer editions of it right there, updated. I have one there. Hazardous materials in all of thy word. Um, I've read excerpts from them, but I've never been able to actually sit down and read through the whole thing. Um, forgot I have to show this one too. Uh, yeah, there. <clears throat> the language of the King James Bible. Um, read that one. Which Bible can we trust by compiled by Les Garrett? I've read that one. King James and his translators. King James, his Bible and its translators by Lawrence Vance. I've read that one. Defending the King James Bible by Dr. D.A. Waite. Read that one. He actually invited me to come and, and to a uh, King James conference that they had the one time. Didn't go because he's not a King James only guy. He's a King James Bible believer. He uses the King James Bible, but he's a Texas Receptus guy, so I don't agree with that stand. Forever Settled by Dr. Jack Mormon. Read that one. Um, friend of the Ministry, uh, Micah Colston. He's written a number of books, but this is a really good one here. Uh, the True Standard. Lots of good arguments in there. Again, a pretty thick book. King James and his translators, another little booklet. Things that are different are not the same. Very good title by Mickey Carter, right there. Dr. Mickey P. Carter. Which Bible by David Otis Fuller. And there you go. If the foundations be destroyed by... Word and Prayer Ministries. I'm not sure who was the one. Crick, Chick Salaby. Okay. The foundations be destroyed. Again, I'll show you here some of my highlighting in the thing. Um, right there it is. I've read that one. Um, one of the early ministries, I guess you could call it, that uh, would kind of defend the King James Bible, but they used the Amplified Bible. Cutting Edge Ministries, they were into a lot of the conspiracy stuff. 
and I spent some time with them, and then they went off on the King James Bible, and oh, it's a secret occult book, and the whole Francis Bacon thing, and they got into that whole wingnut theory thing, which is nonsense. There were 54 translators. It wasn't, you know, uh, what's his name? I just said his name. I'm getting kind of bogged down with all this stuff. Um, but um, Francis Bacon, Sir, you know, Francis Bacon, it was him that actually wrote it. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Okay, it was a translation made, long line of translations there you know a lot of them are the same similar wording i've showed that before the i might show it here towards the end of the video but they came into this whole thing of the occult symbology and all this other stuff and so you have here cutting edge lodged in the groves okay they answered their ridiculous little theories and things and i'll get back to some of this other stuff here in a minute but um this one i just finished reading by David Daniels, is the world's oldest Bible a fake? One of you had sent this to me, and I've been wanting to read it. Finally got around to reading it, and I'm going to be doing some things with this book, believe me, in the future. Excellent book. Very highly recommended. <clears throat> Again, not going to say I agree with everything Chick Publications puts out. Absolutely. But I will give credit where credit is due. This is a mind-blowing book. This one's a good one, okay, because it's completely shows that the whole new version thing was a scam from day one. So there's that. Okay, again, I have showed this in other studies. These are all Greek texts. Hodges and Farstads, the majority Greek. The Texas Receptus slash Hebrew Masoretic. This is what the King James translators would have had access to. Um, then you have the Nestles 28th, the Nestles 27th, and the Nestles 25th right there so there's that and then you have a just the regular textus receptus right here put out by the trinitarian bible society so there you go i've looked at those i've studied those um and you know you can see here even in this uh nestle's 25th edition um you can kind of see some of it but you can see all the bookmarks up top there and you can see my highlighting down there in the text, down in here. Okay, so yes, I have studied, looked at this whole thing. Um, so there you go. Then I also have um, reference works that aren't really, uh, you read from the beginning to the end. They're kind of like a dictionary or whatever else. Here we have 8,000 differences between the New Testament Greek words of the King James Bible and the modern versions by Dr. Jack Mormon scholarly research document right there it is did a really good job and you can see texas receptus the scrivener and the nestle alon 26 27th right there <clears throat> gets into some of the different wording and things like that not really a book that you would read from cover to cover but you can of course look up things in that one um white's dictionary of the king james language Volume 1, A through E. Volume 2, F through H. This is all that was available back when I bought these. Um, goes a little bit further than Webster's 1828 Dictionary in defining words in your King James Bible. I don't know if they went beyond the letter H now or not. I haven't checked in a while. But again, not something that you would read just completely through because it's, it's just defining words. But very interesting, neat stuff in there. Um, looked at those quite extensively. And then the authorized version, um, Archaic Words and the Authorized Version by Lawrence Vance. I've talked about this book on, in different studies, showing that there are actually, back here in the back, he has um, uh, Archaic Words Retained in the NIV, comparing words in the NIV to the King James Bible. And um, it's kind of funny how, oh, we've had to update you know, words that King James is too hard to understand. Then you actually look at some of these verses and they actually made the King James Bible easy word harder to understand with the new version. So, so much for the uh, updating the archaic language. They actually make it more archaic in many cases. And you can study it out. All the lists are right there in that book. Here we have Early Manuscripts and the Authorized Version by Dr. Jack Mormon. Again, showing some of the papyrus fragments, some of the things that are actually very old, 
very ancient, and how that they line up with readings in the King James Bible, not with readings in the uh, Nestles or the New Versions. So there's that. Um, early Church Fathers and the Authorized Version. Again, showing, I talked about this a little bit earlier, it's not that we recommend you study the Church Fathers, you know, Athanasius and uh, Polycarp and Tertullian and guys like that, or, or uh, Origen, Adamantius Origen. Um, no, I'm not saying to study them, but the whole point is one of the new version attacks is that, especially with 1 John 5, 7, the Johannine comma, there's no early manuscript evidence for it. It's just a late, later edition and whatever else, and Erasmus didn't include it in one of his editions because he was unsure of its authenticity. And the, I know all the arguments. And the fact is that there were early church father citations of that verse, proving that it was there in the first few centuries. Uh, it's not that they were good men. They were just saying it's there. So, you know, the new versionists would come out and they would say, there are no, there's no written proof of there being chariots in the second century or something. And you'd say, well, you know, an early church father said that he went to town on a, in a chariot, you know, so there's the proof. It's not that you're proving the church father's work to be good. You're just simply saying he mentioned it. If you see what I'm saying there. So they were mentioning the contradict or the uh, controversial verses in the King James Bible that new version people say were added. And there's no early manuscript evidence for them. Well, there's early manuscript evidence for them. Plus, there's also church father's citations for a lot of these controversial, you know, the last 12 verses of the uh end of the book of Mark and things. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. Also, I have um, Bible version articles, lots of articles that I printed out, read online, and then I printed them. And, you know, article after article. Again, years of study going into this stuff, going through, finding the best articles, printing them out, showing them to family members, showing them to different people, taking notes, the whole thing. And another excellent work um, here, <clears throat> the errors in the King James Bible. Also another kind of a, a reference type of a work. This one is more, you could read this one actually because he does a pretty good job of it. But you can see again my highlighted text down here, just flipping randomly open to a page. More highlighted text there. I've read, you know, thousands of pages of information on this issue. Um, <clears throat> let me grab something here quick. Uh, I get brethren and they send me things and they say, hey, brother, could, you know, I wrote this book. Could you please check this out or whatever else? Um, had one of my viewers recently write the perfect word of God destroying 101 supposed Bible contradictions compiled by Ilya Avramov. Right there. I haven't gotten around to reading it yet. I'm very sorry. I haven't been able to get back to people on this, back to you on this. Sorry about that. They sent me a couple of copies of it. I'm one man. I can only do so much. Um, but <clears throat> I had another brother. I came out with a video years ago about, it was called The New Versions Aren't Really New. And I get into the fact that the, uh, um, Dewey Reams version had a lot of these newer readings that appear, you know, in today's modern versions, the NIV, NASB, all of them. And, you know, they say, well, these, you know, these, these new discoveries in the Greek language stuff, they weren't available in 1611, which is demonstrably false because if they show up in the 1610 Dewey Reams, then they were available to the translators of the King James Bible. And Vaticanus, I forget the, the one book here, uh, this one. Um, can we trust, which Bible can we trust by Les Garrett? This one actually has the quotations in it where Erasmus was talking about um, the uh, Vaticanus, that he was familiar with Vaticanus, the readings of it back in his day. So, uh, yes, they were very aware of these this newer Greek information or whatever that was not available. It was available. And the <clears throat> the Dewey Reams translation actually has a lot of these newer readings in it, and it was there before the King James Bible was trans or finished. 
you know, a year before it was finished. And the King James translators did have access to the Dewey Reams. They did have copies of it and things that they could look at and compare with their own work. Again, the scholars behind the King James Bible were very eminent scholars. They were brilliant men, extremely brilliant. I mean, writing dictionaries, reading and writing and speaking Hebrew and Greek when they were, you know, six or seven years old. The one guy, Lancelot Andrews, or one of them. Uh, tutors to the Queen of England. I mean, we're, you know, we're talking the highest minds of the time, and there were 54 of them, and then 47 until, you know, when it was done. Not dumb men. And, of course, I also have, which I showed in the other video, <clears throat> but I'll show in a little bit more detail here. If I can get these things up, these are heavy. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> My voice is starting to leave me. The first tome or volume of the paraphrase, par paraphrase of Erasmus upon the New Testament. Right there it is. Okay. And you can look in here and you have uh, <clears throat> all the print as it would have looked originally. This is Matthew to Acts. And then you have Romans to Revelation right here. So volume 1, volume 2. Um, put that there. <clears throat> then you have the Matthews Bible, which is William Tyndale, Miles Coverdale, and John Rogers. They compiled it after Tyndale's death, 1537. Right there it is. Again, very beautiful. I have access to that. It actually goes, <clears throat> I'm going to put it back in its actual case here. So, oh, Denlinger, you need to look into these older versions that predate the King James Bible. I have. I own them. Okay, there's the official box and everything else hidden away there inside that to keep it safe. The Bible, the Protestant Reformation, the Geneva Bible, 1560 edition. Oh, the Geneva is the best Bible. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, um, again, I have a book. See if I can spot it really quickly. Um, Sam Gipp came out with a book on the Geneva Bible that there are a number of issues where it's got some translation problems. Uh, now that I say about it, I probably won't be able to find it. Yeah, I'm not sure where it's at. I didn't want to include it with the books that I've read because I haven't had a chance to read it yet. But he has a book on the Geneva Bible. And it's kind of, this one is kind of the grandfather of the King James Bible, which comes out later. So it's the same family. Okay. But this is inferior to the authorized version of 1611 and our modern King James Bible. All right. And the Mandela effect, again, if you haven't studied that, it was all brought out by a witch to make you lose your faith in the King James Bible. The words have not been changed. I've proved that. I actually showed with my RVAV up here. You can't really see it on camera, but I showed that the original way that the King James Bible was, you know, it originally said wine skins and now it says bottles. No, the new versions came out. The RV came out and said wine skins when the King James has always said bottles. Okay, so... Uh, don't fall for that Mandela effect. You can watch my videos on it. It was devised by a witch to make people lose their faith in the King James Bible, and you'll get witches still trying to promote it, even though it's been thoroughly debunked for years. But after the Geneva Bible, you have the Bishop's Bible. It's three volumes. Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. I have it. Again, just to show you, here the... And this is a photo scanned edition of it. This is not just some kind of a reprint. I have it. And here you have a photo scanned edition of the 1611 King James Bible or the authorized version as it was originally called. There you go. Okay, so I have all of that. I also have the, had a, Brother in the Lord, send me this one up here. 
I'm not going to get this big thing down because it weighs a lot, but there's the 1611, there's the 1769. I have a, scores of these old Bibles and things, some of which are almost 200 years old. <clears throat> I have read a lot on the issue. Uh, there's other books that I have not had time to read yet, and I'm looking forward to reading those books. Um, some of the authors I agree with, some I don't agree with, but we all agree on one thing in terms of their theological stands. But we all agree on the fact that the King James Bible is unlike any other Bible in the history of the world, the greatest Bible that ever showed up. Okay, so I think that will be it for my little series on um, my education, how I've learned. Um, I could have gone to a seminary and I would have never been taught this stuff. Um, even uh, something like Bible Baptist uh, uh, Institute in Pensacola, Florida that was run by Peter Ruckman. A lot of this stuff I wouldn't have been taught. I wouldn't have had access to all of this stuff. Um, they give. I've met a lot of PBI graduates. I've known a lot of them personally. Sat down and talked to them, not just you know online, you know, or something. No, I've actually been in their homes. I've talked to them. Um, I've known quite a few, and. Uh, I've never met one that was just, you know, Peter Ruckman is God and, and he never made a mistake and whatever else. Never. But um, all of them said, you know, yeah, Ruckman's a great place to start with learning, but I've went farther and I appreciate this brother's work and that guy and this guy and whatever else. So this teaching of the James White crowd, Norman Geisler, the Jesuit, that it's a, uh, an issue that's emo riddled with emotion and ignorance. Um, well, you should get emotional when people are attacking the Word of God. But to say ignorance, um, all after showing all these books, all the thousands of hours, the fact that I've actually read their works, um, am I ignorant? Oh, I'm ignorant because I don't agree with them. That's how it works. Uh, no, I'm not ignorant. And if you want to continue to persist, again, I realize you out there, the viewers, most of you are ignorant at what all study I have done, all the research I've done. Um, some of you might have known, whatever else, um, the work that I've put into this stuff over the years, 24 years of learning, still blows my mind. I didn't even, I, honestly, if you'd have said to me before today, how many years have you been studying this? I would have said, uh, I don't know. In doing this study, I realized 24 years, 24 years of reading and researching and standing up for it and having attacks and all the other stuff, 24 years. Um, you know, you I've known PhDs, uh, doctor, you know, so-and-so, and, and um, I won't say any names because the one guy got really messed up uh, that I used to know, Baptist pastor, and he gave me some of my materials too. And um, But he knew um, some of the big name guys, you know, personally and things. He was a PhD. It took him 10 years to get his PhD. Well, I've been studying for 24. So... Um, I realize I don't have an official little document that says that I'm a PhD or something like this, but I think I've gone well beyond the point of uh, just your regular casual look at the Bible version issue. Um, and I haven't really talked about this in great detail until now. So uh, for those out there, pastors and things that will write in the comments section, Brian, you need to look into this whole thing more. Um, hopefully now, if you've made it through all of this, uh, Sorry it took me so long, but I had to lay it all out, literally. Um, I don't need to look into it any more than I already have. Okay, I will continue because I like to hear new arguments for the Bible. Um, I don't think I have the... Yeah, there's one I'm currently reading. It's basically the second part two of the uh, David Daniels book on the thing of the uh, Sinaiticus thing being faked by Constantine von Tischendorf. And I'm going to, well, I will be doing some things about that in the future because it's really blowing my mind. Um, <clears throat> but I want to learn more. I want to study more. But um, when you get right down to it, there's really only two ways to look at this whole thing. Either God's word is true, the received text. Over 99% of the extant Greek manuscripts that are out there that have been compiled. There's over 6,000 extant Greek manuscripts now. A lot of the old books, uh, D.A. Waite here, his book, um, 
This one here, he has a chart in it of over 4,000 something manuscripts that have been um, collated and 99% lined up with the King James Bible. Well, the number today is over 6,000 that line up with the King James Bible. Now, either the vast majority of Greek manuscripts are right in their lining up with the text of that underlies this King James Bible, or the new versions with the Nestle-Alon 28th being the newest one, which I have right here in my hands. I'm not afraid to touch it. <laughs> and Or this is right. This one is Assyrian. A Syrian, not Assyrian, but Syrian. This one is from Egypt, Alexandrian. This one is critical. This one is firm. This one says, translate this into English. A lot of great men tried to translate it. William Tyndale, Miles Coverdale, Martin Luther, Erasmus helped to compile the early editions of what later became known as the Texas Receptus. This is the great one here that led to the King James Bible, the greatest Bible that ever showed up on this earth, better than the original autographs. And it's just distribution in the number of lives that it changed. I either can stand with that or I can stand with these nincompoops here that uh, don't believe in any higher authority on this earth than themselves and their own minds and the minds of their academic peers. Um, I'll choose to stand with the King James Bible. And I suggest you do the same. Um, you can put in the time. You can um, go into all this stuff here. And um, I'll tell you another thing. There's a danger to this. And that's what the Bible says. That knowledge puffeth up. You can get into all this stuff here and you can say, well, <clears throat> I've studied this and I've studied that. And I try very hard not to do that. That's why I've never made an actual video showing what all I've studied. Um, I've been on YouTube since 2008. And this is the first time I've done this, showing all the vi different books and videos and tapes and things I've written and all this other stuff. I've never done that until now. But it's because a lot of people don't really know about my education and they think that I'm just some dumb bunny and I'm not. <sighs> I'm going to quit rambling now. <clears throat> I need to get all these books back on the shelves. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, to try to think of where they all went. Uh, but uh, stand by the book, brethren. The book. The book of books. The King James Bible. Greatest book that's ever been written. And it will change your life as it changed my life. That will be it. See you in upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching. Please keep us in your prayers.